G'day from Milano in Italy, where I've been holed up here for the last five days. I didn't expect to be stuck in Milano, but of course we had floods in Imola, which meant there was no Imola Grand Prix. But before I tell you what I have been doing here for the last few days, let me tell you what actually transpired last week. I was flying from New York to London to Milan, then I was catching a train to Bologna and then another train to Imola. First indication I had of there being any drama was on the Monday prior to the race weekend when F1 sends an email saying all media are to stay away from the track. On the Tuesday I get another email just before I get on my flight to London saying we remind all media that you are not to go to the track under any circumstances. We'll let you know when it's safe to do so. At that point I think right we're not going to be on track on Friday but we'll probably do Saturday and Sunday and squeeze everything into two days. So I get on my flight, I get to London, I get on my next flight to Milan and while I'm in the air I get this email which I don't see until I land alerting me that my train trip from Milan to Bologna has been cancelled. Okay, well that's a bit tricky because I'm supposed to be getting on that train and then another one to Imola. And shortly after that I get an email from F1 saying, hey, the whole race has been cancelled. Do not go anywhere near the track. If you're not there, stay away. If you're there, leave. At that point I hadn't seen any of the news coverage because I've been travelling. So how bad was it? Well, you've probably seen all the vision, but I can tell you I have friends working in F1 who are staying in Faenza and they were sending me videos of water two metres deep in the streets and their vans that they'd rented were almost completely submerged. Those cars are now write-offs, I'm absolutely certain of that. At the track, the F1 paddock wasn't affected, but the F2 paddock was definitely underwater. And looking at some other photos and speaking to some people, there was no way that F1 was going to be able to race. And maybe the track would have been okay, but you couldn't get people in and out. It would have been horribly messy and boggy. Another thing to remember that a lot of the emergency services people who would normally attend a Grand Prix and assist were all out doing emergency services things in the flood affected areas. Of course, the two Alpha Tauri drivers were in Faenza, that's the area where the head office of Alpha Tauri is. So they were really in the heartland of the drama going on. So you've probably seen images of Yuki sweeping up and one of Alpha Tauri's social media people, Josh Cruz, cleaning up in the streets. Now I was lucky to get this apartment at the very last minute, otherwise I'd be stuck in a small hotel room with my 21 year old son, uh, perhaps not enjoying it as much as we have done. So how have we spent our time here? We're on a subway train out to San Siro Stadium for the game between AC Milan and Sampdoria. I've never been to an Italian soccer match, so I'm looking forward to it and hopefully there's a fair bit of passion and flair in tonight's game. So we're at the San Siro Stadium now and uh, that train trip, the last three stations, was very, very hot. And these guys give these red things out and then they want some money, but if they give them to you, just keep walking. They give up quick enough. I was a bit worried there because they require ID, but all I had was um, a copy of my passport, a digital one, but they said it was okay. So I'm in. Well, nearly, you know, going to be patted down. Grazie. Grazie. We're in position and I can tell you, there's not much room between the rows. It's very tight and the away supporters are up to our right. It was 159 euros for these seats, but as you can see, right smack, or nearly smack bang in the middle, and there's a fair bit of noise. Prior to the start of the game, just then we had uh, maybe 30 seconds of silence as a tribute to those who have died in the floods up in the area that we we're supposed to be racing in this weekend. team scoring three of them and the home crowd's pretty excited. I like the seats, I like the fact that they're padded and quite frankly they need to be because there's not very much width as I mentioned earlier on. Still great experience and you can certainly see why Sampdoria is on the bottom of the league table. A very entertaining evening here at San Siro Stadium. 
We're leaving about 10 minutes early and uh, the score was 5-1 with AC Milan well and truly in front. Was it worth 160 euros for the seat? Who knows, but it was a great experience and uh, first time I've been to an Italian football game. Now it's a 10 minute walk back to the train station and catch uh, two metros and about a 600 metre walk back to our apartment on what is a lovely night in Milan. Well today I've come to Lake Como here in uh, the north of Italy and I've decided to come and have a look at this Concourse de Elegance which is quite gorgeous. Millions and millions of dollars worth of cars and of course if you want a snack you can get champagne, you can get caviar or even oysters behind me. And it's not just old cars, these are some brand new models including this gorgeous looking Pagani here. I'm suitably impressed with this magnificent beast. This is an S9, now you probably haven't heard of that. It's designed by Walter De Silva and Partners. It's designed to go 400 kilometres an hour. It is absolutely spectacular to look at. It's a longer car than you'd expect of a sports car. It dates back to the 60s sort of feel. But I tell you what, when you get all these people sitting in front of you taking your photos, you know you're in something special. And this is indeed something special. If you're a mad car person, you would love this. It's 33 euros a head to get in, but there's quite a lot on offer here, and uh, plenty of old and new cars, along with plenty of options to eat and drink. This is Il Festival, the public day at Villa Erba. There are other cars on display, not only the cars that are from the Concorso, but we had an auction here yesterday. It was a 312 PB track car that got sold for over 10 million, I guess 12 million euros. My favorite car is uh, the F1 GTR long tail race car that we brought. It's one of my favorites. And just over a kilometer from where we were at the Concorso, there's this Porsche show here. And this is one of my favorite cars. Just before we leave Milan, I'm going to suggest if you come here to this city, come to this restaurant. This is in the Bulgari Hotel. It's glorious to look at. The food is spectacular and the prices are surprisingly reasonable for this level of establishment. So today we're going from Milan to Rome on the train. It's a three hour journey. We're going business class. And one of the perks is we get to use the Italo Club Lounge. it's not as lavish as an airline lounge but it's comfortable seating and you get to overlook the train platforms and when you take this lift down from the lounge you come to this area here where you get fast track entry and you don't have to go through the main gates this is our train and we're in cabin number one which is club behind me here is prima and further down is just the standard cabins and what does club look like let's go and have a look So our seats are out in the main cabin, but there's these little closed off four seaters in here, which are quite intimate. So we have two seats facing each other. So a little table here that folds out on both sides. Seats recline a little bit, but it's nowhere near as nice as the train I took uh, last year from Bologna to Rome. That was a different company. This is Italo, and the other one was, some started with F anyway. So there are three cabins of around 38 seats in the Prima class and then there's uh, a handful more cabins which is standard economy which is 56 seats and in club there are just 21 seats hello this is our menu and there's even an onboard entertainment system however as far as i can make out it looks like everything's in italian language <laughs> We're doing 300 kilometres an hour right now. We've just had a bite to eat for lunch. I had a focaccia with ham and cheese and a glass of water, and it was very good. We've been going just over an hour, and we're just south of Bologna. And this area 
was where um, some of the flooding took place. Not far away from Rome now, we've done some 567 kilometres in three hours and ten minutes and a fair clip. It's been lovely scenery outside, very smooth, very comfortable. And at what price? About 145 euros each and a much more pleasant experience than flying. Well, we arrived into Rome on time and it's a gorgeous day, 28 degrees. There is no cloud in the sky that I can see and we've probably got a three or four minute wait for a cab to take us to this Airbnb for two nights. And this is where we're staying, and Big Doors and this is our host. And this is my apartment for the next couple of nights. It's in Campo di Fiori, beautiful area, great apartment, two large bedrooms, two bathrooms, a nice living area, and more than comfortable. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and you can become a member for a whole host of extras. For all of my digital images, head to ProStarPix.com. For my photo books, wall art, signed driver prints, and a range of merchandise, head to KimIlmer.com. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, go to Instagram and search at Kim Ilman. Thanks for watching, and stay passionate. I have to do yours because I can't video mine.